Hey everybody, good morning. Oh, it's hard to tell if I'm even on. Yeah, I didn't see it. I saw it. Oh, there it is. Okay, good morning everybody. It's June 5th, it's Friday, it's 9.32, so I'm two minutes late. Facebook Live has just changed. I had to figure out how to do this. Interesting. Anyway, good morning from the Ozark Mountains, beautiful Branson's where I'm at goofing off and being lazy but <clears throat> some kind of cool stuff has happened um, in the last two days uh, that has nothing to do with riots and protests and all that um, we did do a uh, Art of Flandering Pope uh, podcast last night well attended uh, actually very interesting interchange of ideas so that's our health panel and wellness panel that we do at 7 o'clock on Thursday. So we talked about mental health and racism last night. Hey, Eileen. Hi, Sarah. So what we're going to talk about is a COVID-19 update. And I've got all kinds of tabs open. Hi, Linda. And so I'm going to have to flip through some tabs. But first, we're going to do a little bit of statistics, right? So i got to find out where I put it. So statistics, we are at, um, I think the one, I can't find it, of course. <laughs> I just had this open and I can't find it. Um, so we're at um, um, 110,000 deaths in the U.S. I'll just do it from memory. <clears throat> we're at, I think, 1.3 million cases, um, second in line is Brazil. So Brazil has come roaring to the front, um, actually a higher rate of increase than the United States. But we did break that 100,000 death barrier at 110,000. And um, we haven't heard anything really that much about COVID in the last 10 days or so, right? <clears throat> and apparently um, the social distancing during the protests and stuff has been eliminated. At least if, you know, for people that are doing that. So I guess it remains to be seen what happens to the numbers as we go forward and if the protests and the gatherings continue. However, what we talked about on May 22nd, um, I talked about the hydrochloroquine uh, information for um, uh, treating this in the early aspects of the coronavirus infection. So before you became really symptomatic or within the first day or two of moderate symptom, minimal to moderate symptoms, uh, a lot of those studies were done, or some of the studies that were done were, were started at like the end of life, which doesn't make any sense. Of course, you know, you can't say, well, we're going to start this right before somebody dies. And then they die and say, oh, well, see, look, look what it did. It killed this person. <clears throat> However, right after I got off line two weeks ago, um, The Lancet had published a study, I think while I was online, uh, on 96,000 patients around the world, including Australia. And yesterday, they retracted the study. And there was another study on the use of ACE inhibitors. We've talked about angiotensin converting enzyme receptor um, and how that seems to be the receptor that the virus uses to get into the cell uh, and there was maybe some information that it, somebody taking an ACE inhibitor for blood pressure like me was maybe protected. The New England Journal of Medicine reported on that and retracted that story yesterday. So the link that I put on my this is what we're talking about in class this morning is the Lancet's retraction statement. So if you want to see what they said, it's right there for you to read. Uh, and who broke this was the Guardian, of all people. And the Guardian started picking on um, uh, the Lancet and the uh, company that was providing the data. And the data apparently was flawed, and they caught it because they reported 73 deaths in Australia. And on the date that... Um, the Lancet was talking about at the end date of the study, there had been only been 67 deaths in Australia. So some guys started, you know, a bunch of statisticians started looking at that and that <clears throat> decided, well, that's incorrect. That's an errored number. And so if that's an error, 
uh, what else in the study is in error. Okay, and so there was apparently, uh, I think there were 651 hospitals, something like that, that were on this registry, and all the data came from a company called Surgisphere. And that was their database. And Surgisphere provided all of the data from around the world. And it turns out their data was inaccurate. <clears throat> so Surgisphere has made a comment and said, yes, our data was incorrect. However, the, the we stand by the results of the study, uh, which says that there's no, <clears throat> there appear, appears to be no benefit to using hydrochloroquine. Um, and that may or may not be true, right? <clears throat> I mean, if you get the data wrong, how do you know that the conclusion is um, accurate? Okay, so the interesting thing about it is looking at what the um, company does. Uh, it was founded in 2008. So, I mean, both the New England Journal of Medicine and the Lancet is sort of not accepting or felt that the data that was provided was unacceptable. Um, so, you know, the, you know, the, the um, <clears throat> video, I guess, or the microscope or the magnifying glass is on Surgisphere. And so what is that? What is Surgisphere? Um, <clears throat> so the Guardian started looking around at that. Okay. Because, you know, <clears throat> it became kind of a big deal because the World Health Organization was right in the middle of a study, um, I guess, around the world uh, that was looking at um, hydrochloroquine for uh, COVID-19. So they stopped the study based on that uh, published report in the Lancet on May 22nd. Yesterday, the World Health Organization resumed that study based on this Guardian investigation. Okay, so <clears throat> Surgisphere, um, which is a small company, uh, I've found a few different things. I think that uh, the, the company owner listed 11 employees. LinkedIn had six employees, and then that dropped to three employees on Wednesday this week. So just, you know, two days ago, June 3rd. Uh, if you look at Surgis Fears LinkedIn profile, they have three employees. Okay. But <clears throat> what's the integrity um, of the company? So um, the Guardian published this. They said, well, it appears that their employees include a science fiction writer. Okay, and I, that's not necessarily bad, right? And just because you write stuff doesn't mean you don't have a scientific background. They also say that they have a, um, uh, a company employee that's an adult content model. So basically, calling one of their, basically they're saying in a nice way that one of their employees is a porn star. Um, well, I guess you can be a porn star and still have a scientific background. I suppose I didn't look up who that was um, or what he or she, I didn't look see if it was a man or a woman. Um, but these two studies were published and the owner of Surgisphere was listed as a co-author on both these studies. The Lancet one, which was 96,000 patient, patients, only had four authors and that is why the statisticians and a lot of uh, physicians were looking at this huge study and saying, well, how did four people come up with all this? Usually you would see uh, on a study of that scope, you would see maybe 30, 40, 50 authors, this one was four. Okay, so Guardian started sniffing around and found this. Um, several of Surgisphere's employees had little or no data or scientific background. Of course, Surgisphere's statement says that's not true. Um, <clears throat> and the, um, so the two employees that they outed, I guess, was a science fiction author and a fantasy artist, as well as an employee uh, who is listed as marketing executive uh, who, for Surgisphere, is also an adult model and events hostess. Well, that's marketing, so I think, you know, being a marketing person, now, it sounds like that person doesn't have anything to do with the science stuff. Okay, <clears throat> the LinkedIn page has fewer than 100 followers. Okay, so last week, just six employees, it was changed to three employees on June 3rd. Okay, and it, they claim to run one of the largest and fastest hospital databases in the world with very little online presence. So if you sniff around and look at them on Twitter, they have about 170 followers. They didn't post anything between October of 2017 and March, 20, and March of 2020 on Twitter. Okay, and then the get in touch link on their homepage um, 
redirects you to a WordPress template for cryptocurrency. So how are hospitals supposed to contact a company to join their registry, right? Uh, they mentioned free medical malpractice suits. I didn't touch into those because that, that that's kind of irrelevant. That's just picking on somebody, I think. Um, but <clears throat> the uh, even Wikipedia didn't, um, deleted the uh, owner's page um, following questions about surgery fear and its history, and that was first raised in 2010. Okay, so on Wednesday, the, the World Health Organization announced it would re resume its global trial of hydroxychloroquine. I, I cannot say that, hydroxychloroquine. Okay, so right now there's 3,500 patients in that steady arm of hydroxychloroquine in 35 countries. And they kind of stopped it because that Lancet study made it sound like it was dangerous to be using hydroxychloroquine. Um, there is still nothing on hydroxychloroquine that says that it's a wonder drug or it's the way to treat this in, uh, infection. There's no controlled, um, well-designed studies with an N number of people enrolled that reach statistical, um, um, that are statistically, um, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, valid, statistically valid. So. Um, so now we're up in the air again. So we have a study that says, based on uh, errant data, uh, or data that was an error that says, well, you know, it's dangerous and it doesn't work and all that. So now they're saying, well, um, it may be not dangerous, but it still doesn't work, but you don't know. I mean, you just can't, you know, if you've got, if you've got uh, data that's in error, you can't make any presumptions and you can't make any final analysis, okay? So both, the New England Journal of Medicine, which is kind of a preeminent journal, and the Lan in the U.S. and the Lancet from the United Kingdom have retracted both of their studies based on that Surgis here database. Um, it's kind of interesting. I read both studies. I went to them and read them, and uh, there is no mention of where they get their data. It just says data was compiled. Well, who compiled it was Surgis here, and the Guardian figured it out, and I think a lot of people were kind of sniffing around this that were statisticians. I read a statistical paper and refutation that uh, made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. I know nothing about statistics. Um, as a matter of fact, I dropped the class two weeks into it because I had no idea what they were talking about uh, when I was in college in St. Louis. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you I know how to read a statistical analysis of any research at all. I just have to rely on the fact that a statistician did it and they actually reached um, conclusions based on the statistics. So there's nothing you can conclude um, out of the study in the Lancet that said that hydrochloroquine was dangerous uh, and nothing about using ACE inhibitors from the New England Journal of Medicine that we still don't know. I maintain that I <laughs> am protected because I'm on herbosartan, which is an ACE inhibitor. Uh, but I have no way to prove that to anybody. So I'm not telling you start taking an ACE inhibitor at all. If you're on it, great. If you're not, don't be looking for it. So that's it for today. <clears throat> 15 minutes real quick, but those are huge. When uh, two journals that big retract a study, that's big news. I mean, that you know, that's you know, getting on their knees and basically asking for forgiveness. Um, and then, you know, a little teeny company ground to halt studies that were being, do, were being done worldwide to figure out whether or not this was going to be helpful. So that's kind of an interesting paradigm and paradox. And I'm kind of surprised that two big, <clears throat> two big um, journals like that would take data from an itty bitty company. Um, the CEO still maintains that their company is accurate and uh, they, you know, they did what they did was combine Asian deaths into Australia uh, and assign them to Australian deaths when they were really in Asia. Well, that's kind of a problem. If you're going to be that picky, you got to be picky, right? You got to get to the details. Uh, and then the authors and the co-authors of these studies should have done the same thing. I mean, if you're going to write something, uh, I mean, as much as I, I, I you, you know, I write a lot. When I'm going to say something, I usually 
look at it and I might edit it 10 times before I actually put it uh, put it out there and one of my biggies that I did about six months ago I just reread it and I found an, <laughs> I found a mistake in it but I corrected it again that's probably the 15th time I've redone that so anyway you all have a good weekend lots of storms in Missouri uh, but today is beautiful in the Ozark Mountains, so I'm going to enjoy the weekend. And I'll see you Monday morning at 9.30, and we'll talk about something other than coronavirus. Okay? Um, see you later. Bye. Peace and health to all of you.